Hello everybody. Um, what I have here is a solar powered uh, passive infrared floodlight uh, using LEDs. Uh, you're probably very familiar with the uh, halogen infrared floodlights you get to deter burglars and other nefarious types from coming around your property. Uh, this will be the modern equivalent. It's um, uh, 16 LEDs, a solar panel and some batteries basically and an infrared sensor. Got this off eBay. You forget the name of the store. I might put it in the description. But I'm sure if you search for solar powered IR floodlight, you'll you'll find something similar. It was uh, six dollars, including postage. It was cheap. It was very cheap. Um, so we're going to have a look at it. A bit of a review, maybe a bit of a teardown. So here we go. Uh, box looks pretty decent. Um, no, it's typical sort of stuff. And uh, that's what we have inside, instructions, here's the unit itself, um, it's very sturdy, I'm actually, no it is a lot more sturdy than I expected, uh, from the photograph you think, and on eBay you think it's going to be bigger, um, but that's typical of eBay, you know, caveat emptor, buyer beware of all this sort of stuff, um, <clears throat> there's the solar panel, um, it looks like the solar panel, the recess that it's set into, uh, has actually had some kind of resin poured into it to seal it up. Um, around the edges, if you follow it, you can actually, you can't, there's actually not enough room to get your fingernail into it. So it looks like they've actually literally poured resin in, on top of the solar panel to seal it up, which is great. That's, that's good. Except I'm just looking at these screws. They don't, they look like uh, they would actually compromise the weatherproofing of it. And around the side, I've noticed the... Uh, no, there doesn't appear to be any rubber gasket around the edge to stop water ingress, so it remains to be seen if it would la no, if water would be kept out. Uh, it's also at a funny angle, so when you put it up, if you put it up against a wall like that, the water is going to flow down, so it means the light's going to be pointed inwards, which, if it prevents the water getting in, great. Um, so uh, to switch it on and off, you use this uh, little tool. It's a bit like one of these SIM card rec removal tools you get with modern smartphones. And this is going to switch on and it's going to be very bright. Um, it's very bright. Um, I will say that much. Let's put this back in the box. Don't lose it. Uh, I don't actually have enough light in the shed to switch this off because it, you, it switches itself on and off using the amount of uh, light available. So I'm actually going to use this light here to switch it off. I'll show you an interesting feature, which I quite like about it. As the more, it's got a graduated response. Most of these floodlights, uh, when they activate in the evening, they, 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 they reach a point where they switch on. There's no gradual switching on. So it goes from that and you see more. And think of this operating in reverse. So imagine that this is the sun going away, but it's actually the sun coming in here. It's actually quite nice. Um, now there is one curious feature about this I don't quite understand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the side because it's just wrecking the camera on the phone. And I'll give it a minute or two to let something happen. And while that does that, um, here we go. I don't know if you can actually see it. Oh, switch it on again. But anyway, what happens is it never switches off completely. So if there's no movement detected, it goes into dim mode as opposed to switch off mode, which I find curious. Um, I don't know if I'd want the light to stay on even in, even if it is very dim. Um, maybe it's designed with businesses in mind who want some sort of background light always and for the light to pop up and go bright whenever it detects something. So uh, you think you can barely see it, you know, the, the light, but there is light on. I'm going to try and move this without activating it. Probably not going to work. Nah, but anyway, there's dim. The light remains dim. So, uh, so it works. It works pretty well. The sensitivity of the sensor, the passive infrared sensor, is pretty decent. It works just as well as uh, our existing uh, halogen infrared light, which is uh, on its last legs because it's letting in water, and I can see water inside the housing. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to switch this off and have a look inside if I can find. The tool. I'm sure. Oh, there we go. It's going into dim mode there. 
Now it's back again. So, now before opening it, I'll have a quick gander through the instructions. At first I thought this whole dim mode thing was a bit of a mis oh, must have been a fault or something, because why would, why would it never switch off completely? But the instructions make it quite clear that's normal. But what caught my attention was uh, the specifications. So it goes through all the details of what they have. A 3.7 lithium, lithium ion battery, 900 milliamps. Well, we'll see what, if that's true or not. Um, dim mode for power saving when there's no motion. Bright mode when it detects motion. But this um, famous brand components. Murata Panasonic ST Toshiba. Call me an old cynic, but I don't think something that costs $6 has those components in it what remains to be seen so let's uh let's open it up and have a look oh before i do use that to hold the screws yeah so uh been a bit of a wet day today um we're having that strange uh oh dublin well you get around april and may of every year where <clears throat> the it's warm one minute and raining the next Literally, you, know, you could have like a minute's downpour, heavy, heavy downpour, and then the next minute, sun. So you end up with humidity because the all the surface water starts to turn to steam. Oh, I really don't want to lose these screws because they're so small. They're also quite soft metal, so what you expect with these kind of things. So you got to make sure you got a good firm grip with the screwdriver. So need to graft. Grab the shaft as hard as you can and make sure it's well inserted. And it sounds like I'm talking like I'm in a carry on film. I wish they'd bring back the carry on films. You know, there was talk of the making one a few years back called Carry On London. Um, but then uh, Peter Rogers, the producer of the original film series, he died. So I think any chances of that happening died with him. Oh, here we go. So there's the battery. Um, let's see what we have. Okay, so that chip has no markings on it. Who's the manufacturer? Yu Yang. B2003. I'm just going to come out and say I don't think those are actually uh, famous brand name components. The quality doesn't look that great. Like I say, there's nothing inherently wrong with the design and build of this, actually. It's quite nice. I just don't think they're using Panasonic or Toshiba or Murata components. This appears to be stuck in with some kind of foam, self adhesive foam. I might not actually be able to figure it. Hmm. When all else fails, Mr. Stanley can come and help. You gotta be careful doing this around lithium ion batteries because no. You don't want to pierce them. Yeah, this kind of phones doesn't even look like it was cut properly, they just sort of pulled a bit off. There's absolutely no markings on the outside of that battery, it's been covered in plastic. Let's see. I can always cover this up with insulation tape if I need to. Looks a bit similar to an old Nokia battery. Okay, what have we got here? I can't work that out. You know, I'm going to be back in a minute. Yeah, so um, I went off and looked at the part code for the battery, and it turns out, yes, it is indeed a mobile. It's marketed as a mobile phone battery. So the code was BL space five two three four five zero AR, and if you type that into Google, you'll get to 
a couple of component sites based in China and they talk about these as mobile phone batteries. Um, and I thought the BL code sounded familiar and the Nokia 6230 and the, well, the 60, the Nokia 6000 series, remember them? Very nice phones in their day. I uh, used the BL5C battery, uh, which I thought, which is basically that shape and size, but a bit better made. Um, yeah, so there you go. Let's, let's use what you use as a mobile phone battery. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. So, you know, something like it's, I don't mind this at all. It's actually, uh, it's not a bad piece of kit, to be honest with you. Now, uh, what I am going to do is probably put some waterproofing here. There does appear to be a kind of gasket and a groove along here, but it's not, it doesn't stick out enough. So, what I will probably do is maybe even just use a bit of hot glue. Um, put it around there. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, you know, upgrading products you buy. You know, a lot of manufacturers, um, they make various versions of the products and they're trying to upsell you, but sometimes you can buy the lower end version and do a little bit of work yourself and upgrade it yourself. Uh, and this is a good example. No, it's a cheap product, but, you know, you can up uh, upgrade, it, upgrade it yourself if you really wanted to. Now, I noticed the screws, they come through into here. So even if this is a waterproof gasket along here, the screws actually violate that principle. So what I might actually do with the screws is when I put them back in is put a little bit of epoxy on top of them as well. And then you will have, which would hopefully be a pretty decent, you know, security lamp. I don't mind the dim setting. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a deterrent. You know, so, you know, for $6, not bad at all. Um, a nice little project and to work around with. It's probably also quite hackable as well. Um, and there's a the circuit board there appears to you know it's all it's all surface mount, so I don't think there's a lot you could do with that. But I'm sure you no. Know, there's nice long wires here coming off. So if I'm someone who I'm sure someone who's handy with circuit design and the like could actually come up with something very interesting. So yeah, I actually like it. Not bad at all. Cheerio.